No. Hello, everyone, and welcome back to Zero Interest. Today, we're doing Mob Psycho 100, Episode 9, Claw, 7th Division. Claw. So, Casey, start us off, then. The Claw. Anyway, <clears throat> so, I, as per usual, kind of a little bit forget which point we started like i have a general idea of the whole episode but i don't remember where it started yeah the uh sakurai the sword guy and the uh other punchy guy who mob fought earlier mm. have they're basically walking into the base with the kids and he reveals yeah i couldn't take care of this one esper kid i used that i had too much on my plate to take care of that kid yeah and he's the sword guy is like, you dumbass, you're not, you were supposed to get the strongest Esper kids, you left one behind because you're a dumbass, you're a dumbass. So, uh, another guy over here is this, and it is apparently the worst possible guy to do so, and... Tarana, <clears throat> who's got like black and white hair and mustache. Salt and pepper, kind of, except stupid. Yeah, yeah except stupid. Hmm. He, he's meant to look stupid. Yeah, with his stupid mustache and tiny beard. It's fucking ridiculous, right? Yeah. Or well, yeah. the black and white with it being inconsistent and, like... Yeah. Anyway, so mm -hmm. he overhears, and he's like, Oh, that's all this then. Um, yeah. So, Mob and Turkey are discussing what exactly they're going to do about this whole claw situation. They're like, we don't have anyone to do and to, but we got nothing. Uh, and we get a scene of Tarada on his way to deal with them. <clears throat> and he's like, yeah, it's just some fucking kids probably. We'll just get in and out and deal with this real quick. Just nipping some trouble in the bud. Yep. And, you know, meanwhile uh, Taruki's like Hey, Mob, you could sure you somebody smart and strong and reliable to help you out in this situation, huh? Somebody right underneath your nose, huh? The Body Improvement Club! <laughs> no, I'm right here! <laughs> mm. Body Improvement Club. Just gonna show what, what Mob okay, thinks of the... <laughs> they are smart and strong and reliable. Mm-hmm. Uh, so, <laughs> yeah, they're like, uh, so we need to actually get some idea of what we're actually going to do, because we have no idea what we're doing, and we have no clues to go on. Uh, Turkey's like, hey, we, you know, we don't really have to worry about clues, because we're going to have someone who can tell us everything we want to know. Show up right about... Right about now. Right, right. And then he shows up, because, you know, <laughs> it's dramatic convenience. Um, yeah, so... Then we move back to the Espada. We're going to just run this through like it's scripted because this is, you know, we've already done this bit a little bit, but, you know, it's the Espada. Um, hey. Which yeah, yeah. Zero forgot his part. Okay. That's fine. Yeah. I don't I don't want to continue this Bleach reference train that you're on. It's not it's even a, a train. This is the stuff that we already there. did and there were jokes and the, the, the oh, fucking stupid ever breaking is funny. But yeah, this is literally the Espada, and piercing guy is uh, Grimjow, including the whole fighting the guy and failing, and then wanting to fight the guy again and giving the chance to fight again and failing. So, yeah, just saying. Mm. Uh, yeah, yeah, I know. And they're all sniping at each other because they're the Espada, and Sword Guy is the common collected Ulkiora one. Uh, and... Then the big boss shows up, and he's like, Hey, uh, we're planning on promoting someone to, like, uh, the upper echelons in headquarters, which is, like, you know, getting promoted to corporate, I guess. Um, and yeah, you, then you he's like, Oh, important. accept you, Tarada, because you're a fucking moron that screwed up. So Koyama. Koyama. Oh, yeah, Koyama, sorry. 
so many names that none of them will matter. Um, yeah. Nice to have confirmation. Uh, so I think Tirada might come back later on, but that's it, it's him and uh, maybe two others in this whole group of Claw. Mm. For the most part, a lot of them are irrelevant. Yeah. So uh, that happens, uh, and then uh, they talk about Tirada going to fight that kid, and he's cautious. He'll be fine, he won't underestimate them like I did, and then we got back to them waterboarding him. <laughs> and he's like, I let my guard down! Yeah. So, he is has already told them all of the information they wanted to know, but they think he's lying because it was too easy. So they just keep torturing him. <laughs> and Mob is like, hey, maybe we should calm it down. You know, let this guy get a, some air and maybe a drink of water. Love the waterboarding. Do you not realize how cruel that is? Like... It's just. So it's like, oh, it's okay. Almost, well... it's, it's like an unintentional good cop, bad cop, which is pretty good. Yeah. Only the good cop is kind of a dick. <laughs> so they're like, yeah, we'll just get him to take us to their headquarters. Hmm. Uh, and we get scenes of. Uh, the junior psychics agency, whatever the fucking kids, yeah. the kids. I don't know. They don't really have just call them the kids. Yeah, uh, and they're being told, "Hey, you should probably just you know tell us all about how you're psychic and stuff and join the organization because things will go not so great if you don't." Um, there's three of the grunts. Yeah. The the grunts, the ones that were just sort of forced to be super psychics and are thus kind of shitty at it and kind of broken people as a result. <clears throat> mm -hmm. uh, and, you know, they give them shit and then one of the uh, important dudes shows up with an yeah. enormous chin that has a scar running right the way down it. Oh, right, they're, they're called the scars because they fought the big boss guy and yeah, it, survived. Yeah, each of them got a scar. each of them got one single scar. And this guy has it right here, running all the way down. I would pan down, but that's really awkward with a static it webcam. Makes me, it makes me feel like... <laughs> it makes me feel like the boss just had to uppercut him in the chin. Hmm. Like, he saw that chin and he's like, I have to hit that and hmm. give you the scar there. Yeah. Also, that looks more like a dimple than dimple shit, by the way. Just want to say, but you know, whatever. It's fine. When, you, when dimples, when you when you smile, you got the the dimples right right here. You know. Yeah, like it's right a little here. indents in your face, right? Yeah, and, and then dimples big just fucking a gross exaggeration. Flush is not fucking dimples, okay? He's he's kind of a gross exaggeration of the concept. I I know, but that was the basis for his name. It's not. It's not what that is. It's not what that is. Um. And he's like, hey, what are your psychic powers? Uh-uh. We're, okay. we're not psychic. What are you talking about? Okay. Let me try this again. You, boxhead. Come here. <laughs> I'll put my hand on your head. You're going to show me your psychic powers. You have mm -hmm. ten seconds. Nope. Nope. I can't, can't. Can't. Can't really. No. Also, in fairness, he actually pretty much can't. He doesn't have yeah. anything beyond telepathy with his brother. It's telepathy with his brother, and that's his only power, so hmm. he can't physically show that. Yeah, so, uh, guy's like, all right, you're coming with me. You guys need to fucking think about what you're actually going to say when I come back. Takes him off, and we hear screaming and stabbing and stuff. And the mm -hmm. guy comes back out, dragging the corpse of Boxhead whose name I don't know or care to know. Daiko? Daiki? Something like that. <clears throat> Started with a die. Uh, oh. Ironically. <laughs> Started with a die. All of these uh, Esper kids are relevant through the rest of the series uh, to some extent. Uh, some more so than others. But they are recurring characters. Mm. Cool. Uh, so, just flops the corpse down and is like, so, I'm going to go away. When I come back, you can tell me all about how your powers work. Cool. 
Cool. I'll be seeing you later. He leaves. And cue the kids freaking out because, of course, like, also, you mm. know, one of, one of them had their brother killed just now. That's, yeah, reasonable response to that. Um, uh, we move on to something, yeah. What yeah, cut away to mob with the flying car. <laughs> yeah, it's fucking, oh, uh, it so fucking lame in Harry Potter. It's actually pretty cool here. <laughs> he crashes it because it's not his car. No, that's presumably it's fucking Tarada's car. So who gives a shit? Yeah, it's Tarada's car. So, <laughs> uh, they get out and Tarada starts to run away. Yeah, they're like uh, we don't have time for this. Let's fucking go. You already beat him once. He's not going to try something stupid again. I'm going to try something stupid again. <laughs> psychic whips. In fact, psychic whips. Here's exactly how they work, so you know how to defeat them because we're shonen. <laughs> It's kind of a joke on that concept. Like, they're playing with it. It's like... Because yeah, it tells no, them I... all about how, how the power works, and then it's completely fucking irrelevant because they just... The mob just smashes him, and it's just like... Yeah. yeah. It didn't matter. It doesn't matter. Uh, fun fact, when he extends his whips, he controls them with his middle fingers. <laughs> yeah. Go back and look at it. Rude. He uses, he uses his middle fingers. For his whips. Alright. Uh, so, yeah, they just fucking move on because who cares? Uh, and yeah. They, yeah. I think we might end up doing this a little bit out of order, but just for the sake of convenience, they get to the front door and it's guarded and they just fucking deal with the front, the gate guards, whatever. Uh, yeah. And Dimple possesses one of them. Taruki's like, hey, I just learned this arrow whips trick from that other guy. Cause... Yeah. When you're powerful enough, just steal the other person's technique because that's all they can do, and you're mm. way more powerful than them. Yeah. So Dimple's like, "Yeah, I I can take this guy. I can I couldn't have taken the other guy because psychics all have like shielding just naturally, so it's actually really hard to do that, even unconscious. But this guy was unconscious, and he's not yeah, a psychic, espe- so he's fine. Especially since I've been destroyed twice, <clears throat> I'm really weak. Mm. Yeah. Yeah. Uh. So. Cut back to the kids. I think right about now is where. Yeah, they, pretty much. I think we might have skipped a bit, but uh, we're we're a bit out of order. But yeah, cut back to the kids, and like, okay, we need to find a way to get out of here. Uh, just reach out to the the other boy. It's like, wait, no, he lost his. Bro-. So like, we need to get out of here, dude. I I know you're sad. We need to get out of here. It's like, yeah, I know. Yeah, cool. Uh, turns out his brother is not dead. That was just an illusion, which is apparently this guy's power that they've been talking to. Yeah. Uh, because in talking with his brother, his brother had been shown illusions of all of them dead. Uh, yeah. Which is, like, even even if they couldn't communicate, that's like, okay, I find that a little hard to believe. One, because that was five seconds ago. And two, because, you know, you think all of us are psychic and you don't know that I have really worthwhile powers, so why would you single me out? Well, I think it's kind of like, uh, so he he took the kid away, uh, put him in a room, returned with the illusion. He returned to the kids with a knife and the illusion of the dead body, mm-hmm. then returned to the other kid and said, "While well, I was gone, I killed all your friends because I wouldn't listen. But you can join us." Even so, that that seems really suspect for that. To yeah. Say, then, no. um, You're, he's banking on them being middle schoolers who don't know much. Yeah. Is what I feel. So, yeah, they're like, okay, we need a plan. So, what are all your names and powers again? <laughs> <laughs> Dude, yeah, you're so kind of an asshole. <laughs> Ritsu okay, was kind of too busy being a, a dick at the time to really care about them. Mm. But now that his head's clear, he kind of wants to know who they are. Mm. So, girl is like, okay, that's, you know, that okay. Introductions again. I'm Yuzu Kurosaki. Uh, no, 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 no. Stop. <laughs> no. Stop with it. Her name is Kurosaki Ray, and she has the power of clairvoyance. Okay, Stop fine. with the bleach references. I'm please. sorry. So, Karen is like, okay, so this is the other guy. He does fire, and then there's 
the other guy who does fucking uh, weak telekinesis, shitty telekinesis, and then the obvious, you know the brothers they do fucking yeah telepathy, and yeah. So what the fuck do we do with that? Hmm. Well, you know, you guys are so great and strong that I think if we all work together, the new powerful people will be able to get us out of here. Hmm. I have the spoon. You, yeah, you carry that they, spoon they with you all the time? They didn't search our belongings because they underestimated us. So I have a spoon! Yep. Oh wait, I actually have a spoon. Probably <laughs> I have a spoon! So they have the one kid heat up the spoon, then they stick the heat up spoon in the lock using telekinesis to make it fit to the parameters of the lock because for some reason the lock is, is inside of the cell how, and not on the outside that's not how locks work in any way shape or form but somehow it works sure why not <laughs> so they unlock the cell door and the grunts are like okay what's your next move hot shot because you know congratulations yeah. you unlocked the door now you have to deal with the guards and then the guards guards and then the big guy that you've been talking to, like, and, and everybody's like, "Oh, we have no plan." And Ritz is like, "Well, uh, you guys can take him with your super powerful moves." And they're like, N "No, even though I've said I'm great, I I'm not that. No, we can't do it. I'm sorry." He's like, "Well, I guess I'll take care of it then." <laughs> so he wanders into a dark corner of the hallway, and the thuggers just kind of follow him, like, oh, "Okay, let's fucking deal with this shithead," and then we can get back to just guarding the cell that is now unlocked that we may or may not have the key for, but it's fine. Yeah. Um, and he starts taunting them. Yep. You just kind of shitty shitheads. They're shitty. He doesn't say that, but it's who cares what they what he actually says to the guards. It's not important. Um, and they attack him, and he's like, "Okay, please work powers, please." Please, 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 please. Hmm. And smashes all of them in the wall behind him. Yep. And they're like, okay, that... All right, yeah. so you're actually... Okay. Hmm. We didn't, didn't even... need we any of us. <laughs> <laughs> He's like, well, I just want them to underestimate us so that, you know, I could try to take advantage of that. And draw them into this corner where the security camera doesn't really reach when the blind spot of it. Hmm. So they don't know the other guards are down. So, yeah, that's good plan, dude. And they're like, okay, let's work together to get out of here. And the Yuzu just fucking blushes and, yeah, because he's cool and stuff. And I'm still going to call Yuzu, fuck you. Um... <laughs> I like her. <laughs> she seems nice. Um, she is nice. She can predict yeah. the future 66% of the time. Hmm. Or 70% more rounded up. So, uh, back with Mob and pals. Um, they're wandering through the base trying to find anyone. Uh, yeah. They, I think they... they come across like a grunt... And they're like, hey, what's the deal? Where's the kids? And he's like, uh, they're in the basement after getting his ass kicked, because obviously. Yeah, um, they both accidentally uh, use techniques on the first guy and send him almost through the wall entirely. Mm. And uh, Truki's like, Mob, I, I got this. Don't You don't have to help. Mm. Just save your strength for the big guys. And then they get to yep. the next guy. And it's like, oh, yeah, we're the kids. And yep. he's like, oh, they're in the basement. But you'll never get them. Never. Yeah, and then they keep going, and they run across whatever his name is, piercing guy, Grim Jow. Yeah, there's um, a shortcut over to the, the rest of the claw uh, group. And they're like, Koyama, you can go, but if you screw up again, <clears throat> it's, yeah, you're done. Mm. And, yeah, so. Yeah, and then they run across him, and it's a very brief fight. He's like, you know, I won't underestimate you again. And then Bob just stops him in midair and just 
flings him around like a bouncy ball. Um, and then shoves him into yeah. the ceiling like three feet. And that was unlike actually, last it time. On, it wasn't on camera, but shoves him into the ceiling three feet. Fuck you, kind of thing. So, yeah. unlike last time, where Mob was kind of not wanting to hurt people, and this guy had to hurt his brother before Mob got serious, and then Mob didn't know how to deal with his powers and everything because he'd never fought another Esper like this before, mm. or another Esper at all. When he fought against Taruki, he didn't actually fight; he just got hit all the time. This time, Mob's like, no, screw you, I'm not holding back. Yeah. I noticed there hasn't been anything to do with explosions, uh, which makes sense, because he's not holding his powers back really anymore. It's just he's doing what he has to do. Uh, yeah, his explosion percent hasn't moved because he's at the same level of angry, I guess. I'm not, I'm not sure what percent he's at right now. But he's just well, kind he, of... He just went through an explosion, so I would assume he went back down to zero. Yeah, so he's just... There, there's nothing built up yet. Mm. He's letting things out, so... Hmm. Yeah, air out of the balloon kind of thing. Mm -hmm. uh, so, yeah, that's pretty much the end of the episode. They deal with him, and then they fucking go, and they're like, let's go, and like that's that's it. Mm-hmm. Like, it's, it's that abrupt, is... Let's go. Okay. It's done. So you kind of get the the idea is that Claw is a group of stereotypical villains that exist for that concept to be undermined. Hmm. And... Espada. <laughs> yeah. Koyama, it's like Tarada's, oh, he's so scary, I don't know instantly defeated oh <laughs> he's getting waterboarded is there a Haribel who has like mistress underboob kind of thing I'm kind of looking forward to that character there is one girl and she does like a martial arts style thing uh, she doesn't have the underboob though that's not uh, the, this isn't that kind of show Everything's better with underboob. Anyway. You know, you're not wrong. So, yeah. The generic force of evil is evil, but is evil and generic, but it's fine. Like, the show could use some sort of counterforce for everything that goes on, which you know, it now has in a kind of, you know, ordinary way. But I expect you keep saying he subverts tropes, and I'm waiting for it. Other shoe to drop on this one. Um, yeah. Uh, they, they, don't, like, don't fucking tell me. <laughs> I'm not gonna say anything. I'm not gonna say anything right now. I'm just gonna say you'll get what I mean by the time we get to episode twelve, because right. that's when finally it all comes together. Uh, Being the last episode, that makes sense. Yeah. Uh, although Claw as an organization, like this is just the seventh division, so. I presume the next season they're going to do the whole thing against the, the main actual boss of Claw, and he has a story that's pretty impressive, mm. I guess. All right. Uh, and... Like, they really just... They just set up all of those Bleach references for me. You saw them, though, right? Right? Yeah. They named the character Kurosaki, okay? Wow, this... This actual regular Japanese name means that it's a Bleach reference. About psychics and ghosts? Come on! <laughs> uh, yeah. So, yeah. Um, I'm trying to think what else was like. The ending was abrupt. Mm -hmm. Which I think hits more because this show is much more of a shonen show now like a battle series now than it used to be um, which means I am much more expecting the oh the powerful villain shows up and cliffhanger ending because that's how every fucking episode of a shonen ends um, and they didn't do that they just said fucking no and that was it so yeah kind of unexpected but also 
possibly because of that expectation of, oh, we're going to do a cliffhanger ending, it just kind of felt flat, but probably wasn't. It's a weird thing just because of the expectation, that's all. Yeah, it's it's a weird cut, uh, but at the same time, given the next events, I don't think there's a good point to really cut it. So, hmm. Like, if they wanted to, they could have easily done the usual shonen thing, just like a minute of extra padding, and then, oh, he shows up right at the end of the episode, and then the next episode is just dealt with fucking immediately. Uh, like, there's cliffhanger endings on the next couple episodes, but I'm not saying not, I'm not, not saying there aren't cliffhanger endings in the show. That's yeah. not what I'm saying. I'm just saying they could have done it here, but they chose not to for whatever reason. Yeah. Uh, and I'm not sure why, but yeah, I don't know there's either. No, there's really, no real but... tangible reason not to just do it this way. So yeah, not everything has to be a cliffhanger. Oh, tell that to fucking One Piece and Bleach and Naruto and fucking... Anyway, yeah, that was, that's pretty much the episode, so... Yeah, next time we record, I want to do the, the kind of next three episodes back-to-back -back so we can get some fresh responses. Oh, yeah. That would be nice. But, uh, you know, that's more down to your schedule than mine. Uh, yeah. So, yeah. Mm-hmm. We'll see you guys next time with Mob Psycho 100, Episode 10, The Heinous Aura Mastermind. This is, yeah, you'll get to see Dimple fight somebody, which is interesting. <laughs>